Welcome, everybody, to our December episode of Rec on Record, bringing you the latest and greatest from the City of Fort Collins Senior Center and the City of Fort Collins Recreation Department. We appreciate you being here today. To all of those watching on FCTV at home, thanks for tuning in. Any questions or concerns, please fill out one of our comment cards and we'll try to assess everything at the end of the show. And now, I would like to bring down the man of the hour, Mr. Jason Chaddock. Ashley, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you and welcome to our third installment of Rec on Record. We're very excited to have each one of you here today. Um, we've been getting a lot of positive feedback in the last couple months, but especially I want to take a second to highlight uh, what's going on in the last month. I've had many people come up to me and, and, and comment on myself and Ashley and, and the staff and just thank us for having this show and the wealth of information that they've been able to get from this show, but also the fact that we have this online and on FCTV. We are finding a tremendous amount of people are actually viewing it while at home. So that's been a great honor for us because part of our pathway with this show was how do we get out to the community? How do we present something that you don't necessarily have to be here for in case you have some other plans going on? So that has been really successful and a great highlight to us. And as we kind of talked about that, we looked at community engagement. We all know that's a huge thing for us. How do we get out to the community? How do we have this outreach? And then we also had wanted to bring events and activities going on that you may or may not already know about. And then obviously we always want to be able to address important issues that are going on, not only uh, here at the Senior Center, but within recreation as a whole. And then lastly, we wanted you guys to have the opportunity to meet staff and be able to have some of that interaction and learn more about what they do. So we're finding a ton of feedback to be able to say, Jason, this is working. We're hearing the information, we're learning about new programs, we're learning about things we did not know about this facility. So that's been a great experience for us. So we know we have a lot of people watching on, whether it's TV or if it's on our YouTube channel online through the city's website. So we're really excited about that and we're meeting some of those accomplishments and goals that we had set forth for this show. So thank you all for that, we appreciate that. Next, what I'd like to do is touch base on community engagement because this has been a really important thing for us through the course of 2016. One of the first activities I wanted to highlight was our 4th of July parade. What was so important about that to us is it's not just about recreation. It had so many different departments within the city joining together to put on this big event that our entire community gets to enjoy. So that was really exciting for us as, as co-workers with all the other city departments. And we got to see a great turnout for that event and be able to ride up and down the street with the different parade floats. And even the senior center had a float in there. So this was a really exciting experience for us. A couple other key events I wanna highlight that were important to us here was first the picnic in the park. We had 275 guests come to this event. Just an outstanding turnout and a great way for us to not only get out to the community but to supply some food as well. So this was really exciting for us. The All-American Picnic hosted 115 guests for another activity where we were able to get everybody together and just have a great time sharing ideas, talking and getting positive feedback about what's going on recreationally. And then also great questions that come back to us that we're able to move forward on other things. And then another huge one, this was really important to me personally because I got to bring my kids here to help out at this event was the Veterans Day celebration. My kids got to take that opportunity to learn so much about history and serve our veterans. So that was a great experience for them. And we were able to, to host 375 guests that day for a great breakfast celebration. Um, next, I want to fast forward to one of our big events that we had uh, more recently during the holiday season here. We kicked off with the Holiday Artisan Market. Um, kudos to Ashley for putting that together for us. The Holiday Artisan Market featured 120 vendors and roughly 3,200 guests coming into our facility to purchase items. Just an enormous highlight to the city of Fort Collins and, and these vendors that don't necessarily get into the big shops. They're able to come here and people are able to buy homemade products. Just a great experience for us here in the city of Fort Collins. Um, next, I want to touch base on just a couple items that were really uh, great for us to experience with a lot of our different groups. We have the Quilting Quorum and the Pottery Studio were able to work to make 
a lot of donations, and that was great for us through the 2016 season. Some of the key items were quilts, afghans, hats, and bowls that they were able to donate. So just a great opportunity for our seniors to get together and give back to the community. So we're really excited about those opportunities of our seniors being able to give back to the community in other ways that don't just stay within the senior center, but they get out within the city as a whole. And then lastly, as far as talking about volunteers, Betsy's gonna have a presentation for us in a little while on that, but I just wanna highlight, we had uh, roughly uh, 4,800 hours through the 2015 year, and Betsy's gonna get us up to speed uh, of some new statistics we have. Just an outstanding opportunity for our seniors to be able to volunteer here, and then the tremendous contribution they make to us recreationally and to support the city. The next thing I want to focus on is about our LEED certification. And I want to explain kind of how this came up. We've had many meetings and presentations that have gone on. Well, many of you guests of our facility have been fantastic in asking us questions and trying to learn more about what's going on here within the Senior Center and ask different questions about items you're seeing. Well, this was actually I think we had about three or four different people ask questions in regards to solar, the parking lot, and various uh, efficiencies that we're doing throughout the center. So this particular section we're going to cover now is actually brought on by our guests asking questions, and we've decided to highlight that in this presentation today. Um, LEED certification, for those of you that may not know, what this does is we are LEED Gold certified, and it's leadership in energy and environmental design. That is something the city is striving to uh, complete at any facility that's being renovated and any new facility that's being built here in the city of Fort Collins. So fantastic achievement for us. And wh what I want to do is highlight just a couple key components from that. Um, one of the things we did a couple years ago, 18,000 square foot uh, addition put onto this facility here. And the goal was to hit a net zero increase in utilities. And I can tell you right now that we are trending to that. So what's fantastic about that is to add 18,000 square foot and not see a substantial increase in your utility usage. That's an incredible feat to accomplish. And we're really excited about that particular feature for our facility here. Um, one of the other things that I want to highlight is some of the some of the things that you'll see throughout the facility. Uh, we have new LED lighting and we also have solar panels that do supply energy to the senior center and right now what we're hoping to do is increase this ability as we continue to go. Obviously we all know LED lighting supplies big cost savings and also these bulbs last far longer than regular. So that's some of the neat features we have. Solar paneling is obviously something that's taking place in many facilities throughout the city of Fort Collins and this is one way for us to get some energy cost savings as well and be environmentally conscious at the same time. Another thing you'll notice in the parking lot, we get asked a lot of questions about some of the parking space out here we do have some low emission parking which also went into lead certification as well as some electric car stations so these things have been huge for us as far as obtaining lead certification and they've also uh, presented uh, environmentally friendly solutions for us here at the facility while while staying um, in tune with all of the latest and greatest as we continue to develop further. A couple of the last things I want to highlight that you may or may not see. Um, one of the big things that had happened uh, was drip irrigation to be uh, installed in the shrubbery that is around the facility outside. Low flow water fixtures, you'll notice that in the restrooms here. And then also a big huge thing that went on during the renovation process was was the fixing of leakage points. There were air leakage points within the ceiling and some of the back areas. Those were all repaired during the renovation process. So just a great opportunity for us to become more efficient as a facility and then be able to have cost savings with that. So we're really excited about those changes that have taken place over the last couple years. Next, I wanted to touch base on something that we've talked about last month and you guys are hearing a lot about is the epic renovation that has taken place. Um, you'll notice on the picture behind me, that's a new picture of the pool and Waddles, the mascot over at Epic. Um, so one of the things I wanna highlight about the Epic renovations is when you go into that facility, you'll notice that when you walk in, the lobby has been completely renovated. The front desk is actually at the very entrance of the facility. So now this affords the staff there the opportunity to greet each guest as they come in, and they're able to check everybody in and direct them appropriately to whatever program class or, or participation activity that they're checking in for. So that's been a great feature that they've been able to add there 
They've also been able to add a spacious seating area and all new tables and chairs. So those have been some of the great things that have gone on that you'll notice the second you walk into the facility. Now I want to take you forward a couple steps as you walk into the pool area. Some of the things that you'll notice there that they've been able to establish is a flush gutter system that also takes the wake out of the water. So what that means is it allows swimmers to swim faster by taking away the, the wake in the water. It's been a great feature that they've been able to add to that facility. Um, one of the other things that I think is important that you guys probably wouldn't realize just by looking at the facility, they've actually enlarged the gutter piping and they've replaced all the piping that is currently in the pump room. So they have all new plumbing within the facility. The other thing that they've done is added the Defender filter systems, which allows for more efficient filtering of the water within the pool area. The big picture on this is now you're creating more turnover of the water at a faster rate, which is offering you more sanitized water, and it's offering you what's most important is clarity of water. So you're going to notice those, those spectacular features. And that's something that you just can't put a price tag on because it's so important to have that efficiency with the facility. And then also, they've had a chemical change there going from uh, gas chlorine to liquid bleach chlorine. So that's been another one of the uh, efficiency changes that they've made. And it also provides a safer environment for staff. So now they don't have to work with the gas chlorine. Lastly, I want to touch base on uh, with Epic is the fact that when you walk out into the pool area, the other big feature you'll see is they have a new Stark bulkhead. This bulkhead will sit probably about a foot high off of the pool deck. And the neat part to this is they put new starting blocks in this as well. So now you have this bright, white, shiny new bulkhead and all new starting blocks. And what this affords them is the opportunity to move these bulkheads much easier than in past years. These bulkheads actually have an air bladder within them that you blow up, they float, and you're able to move to the next station to change your distance for swimming races. So that's been a really neat feature to add on to them that many people might not be aware of. So I wanted to pass that information on to you guys. Now as we head in, I want to discuss a little bit about some upcoming 2017 improvements here at the, not just the Senior Center, but also at Club Tico and the Pottery Studio. So Club Tico will shut down January 2nd for renovation. We will be doing a catering kitchen there, expanding and remodeling the restrooms that currently exist. And then from there, we'll be building some uh, designated storage areas, as well as plumbing and electrical improvements. So we're really excited about this. This will take place January 2nd through uh, almost the end of May. We look to reopen on May 26th. So that's an upcoming activity that we have going on. Please stay tuned for more information on that. Here at the Senior Center, we'll have continued lobby improvements as we go, making our lobby really the forefront of the center to be able to provide you information and be able to give you direction as to different activities and programs that we have here at the center. One of the big movements we have, and you've seen it with this show, is to have innovation and technology as we continue to develop here at the Senior Center. So we want to be able to not only maintain the latest and greatest, but we want to be able to use this technology to provide our guests the best user experience that they can have here at the Senior Center. As we talked about earlier, this show being able to go online and on FCTV from this very room here in the Twinberry Auditorium at the Senior Center, that's just one of our technology advances that we're able to get out to the community via this resource. One of the next things that we have going on is at the Pottery Studio. Much like here at the Senior Center that we've had some safety and security measures, we're still working with uh, safety, security, and risk management as well as operations services to have some adjustments made at the Pottery Studio with helping to provide a more secure facility. So we're definitely excited about some of those changes as we head into 2017. And with that, I want to say again, thank you all for being here today. We appreciate it. And we're going to continue on with this show. And I'm going to turn it back over to Ashley. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Jason. And now we'll bring down Katie Stever. And she's going to give us a little bit of an update. Here we go. Everybody welcome Katie. Thank you. All righty, gang. Um, I am here today to talk to you about a few different things going on at the Senior Center. Uh, what I want to highlight today is our gymnasium. That may not sound exciting. However, I can guarantee you a gym is not a gym is not a gym. Um, we have the fortune um, to 
have the de dedication of our volunteers, our staff, and um, support of the city um, for funding for improvements and to keep this building looking like it is brand new. Um, we have had the fortune last year of uh, improving our floor completely, re uh, redoing our floor uh, to improve, improve the gymnasium. We also this year are adding acoustic panels, and none of this may sound exciting. However, if you have been in a gymnasium and you just cannot hear yourself think, um, we are putting up acoustic panels to not only improve the look, but the sound quality in that gymnasium. Um, that being said, uh, we have also had the fortune in our expansion at a fitness room, and that opened up the gymnasium to dedicate that space to sport activity. There is not a, a moment in the day where we don't have somebody in that gymnasium doing something. Um, so we have open drop-in times. We also have the ability um, and have done uh, many scheduled activities. So we host badminton, volleyball, um, pickleball and volleyball and numerous other sports. Uh, we provide all of the equipment for those sports so that we uh, make sure that we purchase high quality, very high end um, equipment. For example, our table tennis tables run anywhere from $1,000 to $1,500 a piece um, so that we have very high quality things for you all to come in and, and utilize. We also offer clinics, we offer uh, league play um, and and if there's a, something that we're missing, we can certainly try to squeeze that in, but there's not a whole lot of open time in that space. Uh, we also have the fortune to have an adaptive recreation program that's absolutely amazing. They don't have a home, so they are often here in our gymnasium. They um, hold wheelchair rugby, they hold bocce ball, they hold uh, a number of sports throughout the year, and we are um, I'm very honored to have some of those take place here in, in our gym. So thanks, Renee, and all. Um, the other thing that we do is squeeze some, uh, some special events in throughout the year. So we do host a, a couple of annual holiday markets and some um, events such as that that utilize that gym space. Um, so that's my gymnasium. Very proud of it. I only have one hand. <laughs> um, Quick statistics on the on the facility, a couple of things. Um, we have uh, a social membership that I kind of dug into last month. Um, currently, we have about 2,000 social members uh, here in the building. That's not the only way to come in and do something, but we do have 2,000 2, social members that Ashley works with very closely to uh, program numerous things throughout the year. Um, Silver Sneakers is a program. Uh, Wellness fitness based, it is offered by your insurance or your supplemental insurance. Uh, we host about 900 members at this time that utilize um, our services, mostly fitness. Uh, we have uh, the ability to rent out our space, and we do that. We have increased our rentals by about 13% this year, um, so an amazing statistics. Also, our fitness program, very proud of that fitness program. Uh, new coordinator on board, David. and. Uh, Throughout 2016, we have uh, increased participation in our fitness classes by about 17%. So he's doing an amazing job. I will plug that I started that program, but <laughs> but he's he's done some great improvements and additions and um, add add a lot of things. So. Um, going back to our social membership, what we do every year is we try to stay in touch for example, through this program, but we hosted a breakfast where we actually tried to bring everybody in. Not all 2,000 people showed up, but we did have about 125 guests come. Uh, we had volunteers and a couple of staff people in there cooking breakfast. It was, breakfast. It was absolutely amazing. Um, we gave people the ability to give us feedback on who we are, what we do, what are we doing right and wrong. Um, we have taken all of those comment cards. We will get back to you um, and kind of group those together and deal with um, some of those issues and a lot of positive comments that came in. Um, we also uh, recognized our senior center council who have done some amazing things for many, many years. They did some great things in 2016, looking forward to 2017. Um, they co-hosted that breakfast with us um, and they'll uh, continue to work closely by our side. So that was our annual breakfast. As Jason touched on, um, Epic is officially reopened, but they are going to have some amazing things going on uh, this Saturday from 9 to 2.30. So swing by in the morning. They have um, open uh, exhibitions and ice skating, um, broom ball, curling, all different things that are absolutely amazing. I love to watch, but not really do. We have a skater here in the house. Um, so come by, by and see those demos. That uh, ice and everything will open up for free uh, from 12 to 2, so give it a try. And um, they are just, it's amazing. If you haven't been over there, make sure you go. And if, if you can go this Saturday, uh, take a try on some of the things they have going on. And I am done. Awesome. Thank you so much, Katie. Let's everybody give her a round of applause again. 
Now moving on to our next segment, I would like to bring up someone who is very near and dear to my heart. She is my office mate. She is in charge of all of our volunteers here at the Fort Collins Senior Center, which we could not run here without this program that she does. So everybody, please give a warm round of applause for Betsy Eamon. Thank you, Ashley. She's also a wonderful office mate. And as Ashley said, my name is Betsy Eamon, and I am the volunteer coordinator here at the Fort Collins Senior Center. We have a wonderful team of volunteers that totals over 300 uh, during the course of a year. And it's their dedication and giving of their time and talents that truly contributes to the success of our programs and to the Senior Center overall. Um, as Jason mentioned in the year 20, 2015, our volunteers uh, provided over 4,800 hours of volunteer service to the Senior Center. And we are on track to surpass that number this year because as of August 31st of this year, I had a recorded 3,897 and one half hours. So those half hours and 15 minute increments are important. I wanna thank each one of you that's in the audience today that serves as a volunteer or who is perhaps watching this show that serves as a volunteer because it is you that contributes to our overall success. Um, research shows that uh, not only does volunteering give back to your community and contribute to the overall success of programs, but it also can add measurable improvements to your physical, social, spiritual, emotional, and mental well-being. So to this end, we offer a myriad of volunteer opportunities, which include arts and crafts, committee membership, computer and clerical assistance, dance assistance, food preparation and serving, providing guest services and information, working in our library and media center, providing pre-event organization and setup, volunteering as a trip driver or as a trip host, as a workshop supervisor, and teaching classes such as computer skills, arts and crafts, and more. Now most often one might see a, actually see a volunteer at work, uh, such as in guest services or in the library media center, but we also have a host of volunteers who provide behind the scenes volunteer services, such as the one who waters our plants weekly, or who straightens uh, areas of the lobby, straightens the magazines and the brochures, uh, those who prepare food in our kitchen prior to events, volunteers who update the bulletin boards in our facility, and those who operate the video and sound systems in rooms such as these for events. Those are the hidden volunteers. Um, we offer volunteers for, or we offer opportunities for volunteers that are short term, such as being a food taster at a culinary event, working as a golf cart driver at our picnic in the park. Uh, that would involve picking up the patrons at the actual site where they're eating and transporting them to the trolley where they uh, undertake a free trolley ride and then transporting them back to the picnic site. Uh, we also have persons who serve as people counters in short-term positions at our holiday market uh, and judging paintings at our annual May art show or working at other special events. So we have on-call or occasional volunteer opportunities w as well, and these might involve being an entertainer or, say, perhaps doing some clerical work for us. Some of our long-term opportunities include working as a guest services and information provider, uh, providing weekly services in the library media center, coordinating bridge or bingo, serving on a committee, or perhaps serving a semester or year-long internship. The possibilities are varied, and we strive to offer our volunteers a quality volunteer experience that meets their expectations and allows them to use their many skills and talents. So how does one become a volunteer? <laughs> okay, so first uh, one would have to obtain a volunteer application, which can be done by going to our front desk or getting one from me at my office, or a person can apply online going to the www.fc.gov website. Uh, I'm also happy to email an application to anybody that contacts me over the phone or online. Once I get the application back, the volunteer is then contacted to complete a volunteer orientation where both the volunteer's expectations of the program and our expect expectations of the volunteer are discussed. We also tour the facility and talk about different 
different areas where one might be able to assist. Additional training is provided to volunteers, such as in guest service position, and um, we offer an annual annual safety training to all volunteers, which includes a free dinner. So that's one safety training you don't want to don't want to miss. Um, also, volunteers in specific positions will get specific safety training, such as if they work in the kitchen, then they have to undergo a short safety training in regard to food service prior to beginning a shift in that area. Also at our initial volunteer, volunteer orientation, we talk about how volunteers can both sign up for events and how could they can record their hours. Uh, by the way, beginning in January, we will be offering a new online database uh, with associated trainings to all volunteers. That database system is called Engage. So if you are currently a volunteer, be on the lookout for emails or other information regarding that new database so that you can join us in one of those trainings. Speaking of January, if one of your New Year's resolutions is to try something new, then I encourage you to volunteer for one of our new programs or events. If you're already a volunteer and you'd uh, maybe like to explore a different volunteer opportunity, please talk to me as well. Some of the new volunteer opportunities for 2017 um, would, for example, be what's called a hysterical cafe. Now, we've always offered what's called historical cafes, which is where we have an educational presentation and our volunteers serve a lunch to the attendees. Uh, in February, we are going to have what's called a hysterical cafe. And that was dreamt up by Ashley. Um, that is going to be a comedy show, among other things. So that's going to offer new volunteer opportunities. Also, our Trips and Travels coordinators have doubled up on their trips to the casinos each month due to the popularity of those programs. So we will be looking for new casino hosts. Now, that's a very important position because that involves accompanying those who are going to the casinos on the bus, up to the casinos, and making sure the head count on the way up to the casino is the same head count that you get as those who get back on the bus for the trip home at the end of the day. That can make a difference in the lives of others. <laughs> um, we do have ongoing opportunities for persons who are interested in volunteering, so I encourage you to contact me if you are interested in any facet of our volunteer program. Once again, I'd like to thank all our existing volunteers for their time and talents because you've made a positive difference at the Fort Collins Senior Center and in the lives of others. So thank you and happy holidays. Thank you, Betsy. And once again, we could not do any of the programs that we have here at the Fort Collins Senior Center without our volunteers. So along with Betsy, I like to say thank you as well. Next up, we have our Fort Report. So let's welcome back up Jason Chaddock and our very special guest, Deputy City Manager, Jeff Mahaley. <laughs> Hey, Jeff. Thanks so much for joining Absolutely. us today. Good Appreciate to having you. Yeah. And I promise you that at the Hysterical Cafe, we are not the comedians. Okay. Very good. <laughs> yeah, so it'll be a good time. You should come out to that. I'd like to. Yeah. Um, so for, for those of, uh, those of uh, us here that may not have had the opportunity to speak with you before and learn a little bit about you, mm -hmm. I want to get kicked off today by just telling us a little bit about yourself, mm -hmm. a little bit about your background, and kind of how you ended up in city government. Wow, that's a, that's a really big and interesting question. So I'm originally from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, so go Packers, guys, sorry. <laughs> uh, probably all Bronco fans here, but uh, went to the University of Wisconsin, um, went to graduate school at Portland State University. Somewhere along the line, uh, I couldn't make up my mind like a lot of college students have trouble with and decided that I'd get into uh, land use planning. And I went to graduate school at Portland State to study land use planning and actually had the fortune of working for the city of Portland, Oregon. And those of you who know anything about city planning, it's a beautiful city. They've done really interesting things. And then was a, uh, a planning director in Virginia. And then when I moved to Illinois, my, I guess, perspective and horizons widened uh, quite a bit and started doing economic development work and then city management work. I was in Arizona for a number of years and now here finally in Fort Collins. And I can tell you that this is truly my dream job. I'm so excited to be here and I get to do so many different things. But it's really about my love of cities, about working collaboratively with people and actually seeing the results of my work every single day in a wonderful city. So I think I have one of the best jobs you could possibly think of. That's awesome. Jeff, and, and I got to tell you, I'm really excited to hear about that background because I didn't know you've traveled all over. Oh, yeah. I, get, I get picked on a lot 
because I've traveled all over too, mm -hmm. uh, and, and people say, you know, next time just take a vacation, <laughs> because, <laughs> right. because I've done that same thing, traveling mm -hmm. cross country a couple mm -hmm. times for, for various employment mm -hmm. opportunities. So thanks for sharing that, that's sure. great to know. Um, I want to switch gears a little bit mm -hmm. and uh, take a path down the Malcolm Baldridge Award. Mm -hmm. And what I'd like to do is just tell us a little bit about what did we as a city mm -hmm. learn about ourselves during that process. Okay, sure. So for those of you who are not familiar with it, Malcolm Baldridge is a process of making sure that any organization is continuously improving and getting better and better and better. Okay, And it's not only um, a process that's used for local governments, and in fact very few local governments actually go through it, it's really for more private sector businesses, Fortune 500 businesses and so on. And here's, here's the way I describe it to people. Many of us know that um, one of our, our visions and values is to provide world-class municipal services, and the key words there are world-class. And people say all the time, it's like, man, you're setting the bar really high. One, that's tough, but two, how do you know that you're world-class? Is it just patting ourselves on the back and saying, we are world-class? What Baldridge does, more than anything else, I think, is really to come in and test us. It's an outside organization. They come in and, and evaluate every single thing we do, particularly from a process, whether it's the provision of recreation programs like we are here, acquisition of right-of-way, building streets, providing good sewer and water. They look at the process and they're asking us time and time again, how are you getting better? How are you getting your process better? How are you serving the residents and making sure that you are providing world-class service? So I say what that is is about keeping a promise to world-class, right? Instead of us evaluating ourselves, let's bring somebody else out identify where our strengths are and also our weaknesses and how we can get better. So we recently received our feedback report from Baldridge and I can tell you one category that we are identified as a best practice community is under leadership which is really good to hear and that means our city council, that means our residents, our executive structure and so on so we're getting really good there but we also have a number of opportunities for improvement and what that does is it says if you want to continue on this journey to be a world-class community, here are some things you have to improve. So I would say, as an organization, as an enterprise, it's really kind of finding ways to tune us up a little bit mm -hmm. and for us to get stronger and better. And in my opinion, more than anything else, it, it allows us to provide better quality services for the residents of Fort Collins, and that's what it's all about. Absolutely. So now, kind of fast-forwarding to where we are mm -hmm. here in recreation, mm -hmm. how do you think recreation plays a role in our selection as a Malcolm Baldridge candidate? And do you mm -hmm. think accomplishments such as the national accreditation and obviously being LEED certified, have, what kind of impact have those had? Yeah. It had a, a tremendous impact. So again, for those of you who may not know, but those certification processes really are very, quite rigorous. And what it does more than anything else, it's saying, again, are you being best in class? Are you being methodical in your policies, procedures, recreation? Are you getting better? And it absolutely had a positive impact, whether it's in the streets department or recreation. When we can say we're a, a certified program, or a certified building like we are here, LEED certified, it's showing that we're already taking that extra step to make sure that we're always about quality improvement. So I think recreation was one of the reasons we did so well in many categories. Very good, very good to hear. Yeah. And I know, I know our guests here appreciate that too. Many of our guests here were on the accreditation teams. Okay, And uh, you know, they were big advocates of, of what we were doing here. Yeah. So, so I, I would say they did their part for us on our Baldridge journey. So thank you everybody in the room who helped us with that. Definitely. Um, so now I want to talk a little bit, I mean, as a manager here in recreation, I get to go to some of the, uh, the uh, leadership link activities mm -hmm. and I get to learn a little bit about our structure here. Mm -hmm. But for those that may not be aware, can you walk us through what is our leadership structure here in the city of Fort Collins? Mm -hmm. And then you as a deputy, uh, mm -hmm. assistant, or deputy city manager, what is your role? Yeah, boy, that's a big question. How do I summarize this quickly? So if you look at our organizational chart or how we, we lead in general, guess who's on the top? Most people think it might be, oh, the city manager or the mayor, but it's really not, it's the residents, right? You guys are up top. Because you guys are the voters, you guys are the ones that put leadership in office, and that's the mayor and city council. So you have residents up top, then you have the mayor and city council, and then three people work for the mayor and city council only, believe it or not. That's the city manager, and it's the uh, city judge, and it's the, um, gosh, what am I forgetting? City manager, city clerk, and um, city attorney. Everybody else actually works for one of those three. Okay, and that's kind of where I come into play. We are actually unique for a municipality in that we actually follow more of a corporate model where Darren Atterbury is the city manager, but he's also the CEO or chief executive officer. I'm the deputy city manager, but I'm also the chief operating officer. So everybody that works for the city either works for Darren or for me in one category or another, which is interesting. We have 2,400 employees at our highest point during the year, including volunteers. 
Um, 1,000 of those folks report through Darren, and 1,400 of those folks report through me. And it's not because my job is bigger or more important, it's just that's how we broke it up. Darren's responsible for police and human resources and communications predominantly. Andy spends a tremendous amount of time with city council, as you might expect. And my portfolio is more planning, development, transportation, economic development, recreation, capital improvements, parks, trails, sustainability, environmental, social, and I could go on and on and on. It doesn't sound like much. It's not much. <laughs> but once again, it's an amazing job and I feel very fortunate because I can tell you this, is that um, I'm learning every single day. I'm surrounded by experts and it was very intentional I came to Fort Collins. And then to the next level down are our service area directors. We use what, what I would describe as a, a super department structure. So we don't have an individual recreation department and then an individual um, parks department. We actually kind of merge those together into one super department. Like So under cultural services, we have um, the Lincoln Center. We have our public arts program. We have recreation. We have parks. We have parks planning all reporting up into one super area department. And that's kind of led by Wendy Williams. And I could describe that with sustainability. I could describe with planning, development, transportation, and so on. And we think it's a very good corporate model. And then we all work together to make sure there's alignment amongst ourselves using our city strategic plan to make sure we're all heading in the same direction. So that's a really quick overview of that structure. Well, I gotta say, I just learned a ton. Oh, really? As okay, much as, <laughs> as much as I thought I might've known already, okay. you just totally taught me some new things. So right. thanks for sharing that. Absolutely. Um, do you have a tremendous amount going on and, yeah. and you're a tremendous asset to this city. I appreciate and, that. And uh, we, we've been fortunate enough to have you in a couple different times here mm -hmm. to speak with us, uh, especially one of the moments I recall was when we did the accreditation night mm -hmm. and you were able to come speak with us and it was just a tremendous opportunity to learn about how we mesh together mm -hmm. with the city and the city's mission, vision, values. Um, heading now to 2017, what I'd like to do is if you could uh, touch base on what are three key priorities for this city that stand out to you as we approach 2017? We certainly know there's many, but what are three keys that stand out in your mind? Yeah, boy, that's a really good one. Um, these are less, well, I, I guess some are related to recreation. I'll start there. I, I think some of you know that um, we finished this wonderful building, LEED certified, did some structural reorganization. I think the programmatic activity is amazing. But one of the next big projects we have is Twin Silo Park. You guys are familiar with it? It used to be called the Southwest Community Park until we gave it a really cool name. That's probably going to be our most unique community park in the city. It'll be under construction all of next year. It's going to have a lot of different elements to it, some traditional, some non-traditional. Some of the traditional pieces include soccer fields, baseball fields, and so forth and so on, but also some unique pieces to it too, um, really taking our farming cultural heritage and bringing it into the park itself. And that's why it's called Twin Silo. If you guys remember at uh, Timberline, um, the intersection of Timberline and Drake, I believe, there were some silos there on city property. Oh, yeah. We took those down to widen the roadway. And instead of just trashing those or throwing them away, we actually picked them up, relocated them to the new Twin Silo Park, and we're actually gonna be using those as play apparatus and putting slides and swings through it, so it's really cool. Wow. We're also gonna have um, some community gardens there. Some of you guys may be familiar with those in this city. Also a harvest table for people to come and celebrate and actually do some harvesting there. We're gonna do some unique um, crops on that site as well. So the whole concept there is to respect our cultural heritage, reflect that in the park itself and still make it an active viable park. The other cool element, as you guys may know, is we're doing a nature in the city element there as well, where there's a beautiful creek coming through the property, McPherson Creek. And it's actually been more, I guess, um, channelized over the years, so it's kind of a steep drop ditch. So it's pretty to look at, but that's all it function as. What we're gonna do there, and I think I'm so excited about this, is actually gonna bring down the banks of it, spread it out and widen it, add some rock structures to it, some sand as well, and then make it a play area for kids and families to actually go in the river and play there. Talk about a nature in the city project. How cool is that going to be? And again, if you think about our cultural heritage, that's what people used to do back in the day, used to play in the river. Now we're kind of bringing that concept back. So sorry, I'm all excited about the park, you can tell. Um, I would also say two other big pieces are dealing with our challenges with um, homelessness in our community. There's two big pieces to that. I think there's the folks that need and want the help. And I think we're doing a particularly nice job in that space. But then unfortunately, there's a whole other space where I would call them less homeless and more transient in nature, where they're displaying aggressive behaviors in our downtown. And I think we've seen that um, 
really extend, if you will, in the city over the past couple of years. We're very attuned to it, very sensitive to it. So we're going to have more patrols, more conversation with people, both with a carrot and a stick approach, where we're trying to get people the services they need. But if they're resource resistant, we also need to let them know that there are consequences to bad behavior. And if things don't get corrected, then they have to go in a different direction. I'll just leave it at that. But that's something we're really focusing on. Last thing I'll say is council is going to be making a very critical decision over the next couple of weeks on whether or not the city becomes a gig city, which is all about broadband and making sure that we have the ability to have the highest speed of computer connection anywhere in the city for sure, potentially anywhere in the country. And that's going to attract more people, more talent, and provide us with more opportunities to exchange data up and down the internet. It's also going to attract more people to our, our, our city. It used to be the fact that people would say, now with the internet, you can live and work anywhere in the world. I would say not anymore, because if you think about it, some of the programs that we're running right now are so data intense and need so much memory to be able to shift that up and down on the internet. Right now, it's really only gig cities where we have all this high speed that can have people live anywhere in the world. So if you think about those folks who do that, they typically have really good careers, high paying jobs. They'd love to live in Fort Collins, and we'll reap the benefit by having that talent pool and having the wealth in the community as well. But I think there's benefits for the school district, for the city's electric utility, and everybody in this room. And now, when I'm in my living room and my kids are home from college and my wife from all online at the same time, we actually can use the computers at the same time. So it'll help <laughs> me as well. So those are the, there's so many things we're excited about for next year, but those are just three. And real quick to stem off So that was that. my long answer for the day. So. Oh, no, that was awesome. I mean, tons of information yep. for us, and, and we really appreciate that. Yep. And I know these are questions that we get asked some here as well, and mm -hmm. in some of the different groups that we're a part of and liaisons for as staff, we hear about these questions and great. stuff. So this is great for us to learn mm -hmm. about as well. Um, with, with everything you just talked about, with what the city's goals are for 2017, mm -hmm. how do you see recreation playing a role in that? Oh, recreation is a huge role with that. I, I would say more than anything else, it's really about lifestyle choice more than anything else. I, I, I'm always amazed, having lived in different parts of the country, how fit and relaxed people are in the city of Fort Collins. And I actually attribute that a lot to our amazing recreational programs here in the city of Fort Collins, whether it's really active recreation or it's more some of the trips that we heard about earlier to different venues or shooting pool or playing chess. People really need especially at this point in our lives and this point in the evolution of, of our country, that time to, to refresh and reflect and relax mm -hmm. and stay fit at the same time. So I think in our community in particular, as we're continuing to raise our family and be productive and get things done, we also have to have that calming time, that relaxation time, that fitness time, and also the time with our friends and family. And a lot of times we do that through recreation. Absolutely. You touched on a lot of great points. And recreationally, I want to kind of transition now to, on a personal note, how does recreation play a role in your life? Man, I, so I don't, know, I don't know where I'd be without recreation. And I mean that, this is not just because we're on this show. So from a very young age as a little kid, I remember fondly being in a, in a Cub Scout softball program, right, and playing in the city fields and being engaged in that program. Also playing basketball in the gymnasiums as well. So it's been such a huge part of my life as a youth and then through high school and so forth. But then even as a, as a young adult and finishing college, always very active in recreational programs with folks I work with, like playing volleyball mm -hmm. or date, adult baseball or something like that. And then after having kids, it's been really rich and rewarding for me as well to be a volunteer like a lot of people in this community. I've been a volunteer basketball, football, soccer, and track coach throughout my life. Wow. So. The good news for you guys in many respects is I can see it from many different angles. Mm -hmm. For recreation as a consumer, right? As a coach, as a parent, and now hopefully as someone that helps lead you guys in the direction whether it's building facilities or help massage programs. So I can say to you that recreation has been a huge part of my life and my kids' lives as well. So both of my kids are in college right now. Mm -hmm. They both are college track athletes. And oh, it wasn't for the recreation programs, they wouldn't be there. And my mother, who's in her 70s right now, love my mother to death, she's a big uh, fan of this, the Silver Sneakers program. Awesome. So recreation touches my life in so many ways. That's awesome. That's great to hear. Yeah. I do have one final question for you. Is this, the, is this where the shoe drops or not? No. No, okay. Not, not a right. total shoe All drop. Right. All right. So, so I knew, you and I have talked before, I knew you were a Packers fan. Uh huh. So I'm going to put you on the spot. All right. Who is your favorite Packer football player of all time? Oh, man. 
That's a hard one. Oh, I, I know. You know, I, at, at the end of the day, even though he had a very squirrely part of his career, it has to be Brett Favre. And I'll, and I'll tell you why. I mean, if anybody knows about Brett Favre, here's a kid who grew up in, in Mississippi. He's as hillbilly as they come, right? Straw in his hair and all that stuff. Didn't get recruited heavily. Was coached by his father in high school. Ended up going to Southern Mississippi. Um, was a draft choice. Had a first really tough time in the NFL for the Atlanta Falcons, right? Kind of a party boy, very immature. And I distinctly remember sitting in my office in Virginia at the time I'm reading the newspaper, right? This is pre-internet, so I'm dating myself. And it says, the Green Bay Packers have traded a first-round draft choice to the Atlanta Falcons, and this is what I said to myself, for Brett Favor. Because if you guys know, he spells his name really weird. I'm like, what are they doing? Who is this guy? And who knew at the time that he would lead the Packers to a couple Super Bowls, win the Super Bowl, and I think more importantly, be this amazing leader on the field and off where he was filled with such passion and such commitment. And this guy thought he could do anything. But at the same time, you guys, I don't know if you know this or not at all, but he was an excellent teammate, was really good for the community, and created foundations that are still going on right now. And oh, by the way, he's in the Hall of Fame. So yeah, he's my favorite Packer. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Thanks for sharing that with us. Yep. Um, that concludes the questions I have for us today on the Fort Report. I would like you to stay up here for a minute, though. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a Q&A session here. Okay. Ashley's got a couple questions, just in case there's any questions that okay. are beyond my control here of recreation. Okay, very good. Okay, we have a few questions here. And actually, the first one is probably... Jeff, you're going to probably have to answer this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already thrown under the bus. <laughs> if I have questions for city leadership, what's the best way to get them answered? Oh, that's, that's really easy. Actually, if you um, go on onto CityNet and go online, you'll see a, a link to city leaders. And they can send an email to city leaders. And what that does is it goes to the mayor, all of city council, um, city manager's office, and all the executive lead team. And that way, um, city council can either choose to decide to answer that specifically, or more likely, will forward that question to um, the department that is best able to answer it. And here's the thing that's cool about using city leaders as well. We have a tracking system where every single time we get an email with a specific question, we have a formal process in mind where we respond to the resident within three days, if not sooner. It's called our SAR process, and actually we got points in the Baldridge process for that. So again, emails to city leaders are the absolute best way to do that. I'm very familiar with the SAR process. I bet you are. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, next one is going to be probably for senior center staff. What's going to happen to all of the classes during the Club Tico renovations? I can tell you personally, um, I do a lot of adult dance programs there. And actually, we have um, partnered with some of the local schools in town um, so that we can rent um, some of their gymnasium. Gymnasiums, so I know that some of my classes are actually going to um, Dunn Elementary during that time. So we try to maintain um, our our all of our classes the best that we can while the renovations are going on. But yeah, does anybody else have anything to say? Um, I'll throw in that there are a couple classes that have moved to other facilities, so we've been able to kind of relocate for a temporary period of time. We've been fairly successful with that. Um, so we're, we're excited about that. We're not, we're not running into a realm of displacing any classes. So we've been able to fortunately get that accomplished with our other facilities. And then obviously as soon as we are done with our renovation project, we'll go right back to where we were as far as where our programs are at, at Club Tico. Awesome. Okay, the next one. What happened to the luncheon programs like the historical cafes? Well, I can answer this one. I still do them. So they, <laughs> <laughs> um, we usually, I try to do at least two per quarter. Um, sometimes they will be called lunch and learns. So I know that some people are a little bit confused by that. Um, instead of something based on historical, sometimes we talk about current events as well. And then we'll have a guest speaker that's, um, like in January, we're doing national parks. So that technically wouldn't be a historical cafe. That's going to be more of a lunch and learn. So make sure you're looking um, in the recreator under different titles. They may be titled different things. But yes, historical cafes still do exist. OK, last question. Oh, Jeff, this one's for you. What are city accomplishments from 2016? Wow, that's an amazing um, question. <laughs> you know, I, I yeah, I, I think being recognized again, referring back to Baldridge as a best practice community where it comes to leadership for sure. I think working very collaboratively with the community to build our new budget for this year is huge as well. As you guys know, that's a 
That's a two-year, billion-dollar annual budget, so that's a lot, and I think it provides some excellent services and programs for our community in so many different ways. I think we've made significant progress with a lot of really challenging uh, roadway projects in the city. Prospect, for example, when it's under construction, is, is challenging, but right now if you drive it, it's a beautiful, wonderful roadway. I think we've made some really good inroads in our, our challenges with homelessness. I think we're continuing to provide excellent police protection and so on. So, gosh, I could go on and on. <laughs> I think that's good. And that's all the questions that we have for today. So, so Ashley, real quick, oh, go, go. real quick before we turn <laughs> things over, um, and I'll let Ashley speak for herself, but I, I do want to say one thing real quick, and this is kind of a shout out to my kids. <laughs> I want to wish my son Brendan and my daughter Addison a very happy birthday. Yay. They will be celebrating their eighth and tenth birthday on Saturday. Wow. So. They have the same birthday. They have the same birthday, two years apart. Makes things easy for party planning, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> and my son will be turning two on Saturday as well. So, you know, <laughs> December 17th is a good day. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, I'd just like to thank everybody that presented today. Thank you, Jeff, for coming on down. This was an amazing opportunity for us. Mm -hmm. I would like to thank everyone for com who came to our live studio audience. Please come and join us. We're always going to have this at 11 o'clock on the third Thursday of each month. Or you can catch us on FCTV. And until then, we'll see you next year. And have a safe and happy holiday. Thank you. Thank you, guys.